there are a lot of questions when it comes to Alabama, Utah State. Um, how worried should Alabama be, if at all? Does the Utah State's performance against UConn mean anything? The heck is an Aggie? All those questions and more will be answered here in just a minute on Locked on Bama. Our Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? I'm doing great. Uh, I've, I've heard I shouldn't text and drive, but no one's ever said anything about co-hosting a podcast while driving. So I think we're good. I, I, I know we need to jump right into this because it's game week, but I was laughing that you have done this podcast, and I guess me too, from literally about every angle you can do one from in that car. Except like the next time, maybe you'll have your head through the sunroof and you'll have the camera on the hood. That'd be kind of cool. This thing? It looks like, it really does look like you're ascending to heaven. Ah, well. <laughs> like, like you were in a car crash and, and baseball, the good Lord said, I'm going to take baseball, him and his Coupe de Ville straight up. Based on how my life has gone to date, I should take that deal. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Utah State here for a minute, Jimmy. Um, Bama, Utah State. Look. Uh, Alabama's a 41 and a half point favorite. Alabama's not supposed to be worried about this game. They shouldn't be. Um, if anything, have I, I've been saying for the last several weeks, I think Utah State could give Alabama a better tussle than Texas. I still kind of believe it. I still kind of believe it. But Utah State did nothing for me last Saturday playing UConn. The UConn team, I mean, yeah, they got Mora as their new coach and whatever, but they're they're atrocious and Utah State almost gave up a 200 yard rusher and now they're about to face Jameer Gibbs and Jace McClellan and Roy Dell Williams and Trace Sanders and and a whole bunch of other dudes and here's the other thing I don't think that we can afford it even if um let's say Alabama gets up 35 to 3 or something that's not crazy talk that's not being a homer that could easily happen in the second quarter I don't know that you can take Bryce Young out right now um, I think you still got to play him a little bit. Let him get into his flow. Let him figure out a chemistry with these receivers. You know what I mean? Don't you think so? I do. Uh, but, you know, I, I think I just have a little different read on Utah State. Uh, I, I'm not putting a ton. I mean, I watched it. it I mean, I, I know what happened. I've seen the stats. I agree, particularly about the, the rush defense. I mean, that's got to be a huge issue for them, and and they're going to face a much steeper uh, – Mountain <laughs> on Saturday, stopping Gibbs, who I think is going to be P of the game, by the way. Um, I, I just think in the end, uh, we'll see a Utah State a little closer to last year's team than uh, than what we saw against UConn. Can't help but think that Alabama game was a little bit of a distraction for them. Uh, I, I don't think UConn got the best Utah State team. Alabama's likely to see that. Therefore, I believe Alabama is not going to cover that that line. I, I do think Alabama will win. I think Alabama will win comfortably. Uh, the score will even look blowouty, but I, I don't think Alabama is going to just elephant stomp them. I'll be surprised, impressed, and surprised if Alabama wins this game uh, by more than uh, forty-five points. I, I will be absolutely impressed. Well, that's that's the other school of thought is that maybe Utah State was in the look ahead moment. Now, look, I don't think, yes, the players on Utah State might have this appearance that they think they can win. I doubt they really believe that. But at the same time, you've got to believe all summer long they've been concentrating on Alabama versus concentrating on UConn. I mean, I, I would assume. Um, so maybe they had a little bit of a look ahead, whatever. Um, Utah State did have a running back go over 150 yards themselves in Calvin Tyler, um, but they were given up over six yards of carry uh, against UConn. And this is, again, this is – UConn was considered one of the worst uh, teams in the country this year. I think they still probably are considered one of the worst teams in the country this year. So, um, I don't know. Uh, by the way, what is an Aggie? An Aggie is, is some kind of dog. Is that right? I, I've never really bothered to find out. I think an Aggie is uh, an old school reference to uh, 
to someone who is uh, working in the agricultural fields or the, the field of agriculture. If you're studying agriculture, you're an Aggie. Uh, and I believe Utah State is uh, like Auburn, like Texas A&M. Uh, I think Utah State is that school in Utah, whereas Utah is more business law, medicine, uh, sort of like uh, Alabama. Um, I have a little trivia for you. All right. What is the official record between Alabama and Utah State all time? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but my guess would be a one to zero Alabama. That is true, but they've played twice because they played in 04 and 05. We had to vacate 05. Ah, did not realize it was back-to-back -back years. Didn't remember that. Uh, didn't remember that that was one of the vacated wins. Uh, I certainly remember the vacated uh, part of that. And I remember uh, beating uh, Utah State in 04. Sort of remember that game a little bit because uh, Brody Croyle uh, was uh, – I think Brody was still healthy. Uh, and it was before Brody's season-ending injury in 04 that sort of ruined that, uh, that season. You know, that's a word – we need to use more runt. 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 I've always thought that. Yeah. When I was, uh, I remember vividly when I, my earlier years in college, whenever I had a bad meal at the SAE house, I always said that runt my innards. And I thought that, that I think that's a phrase we need to bring back into our vernacular. Um, Jimmy, I want to go ahead and tell everybody now about Bet Online. Bet Online is where you want to go to get that bet in. Bet Online and it is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all the favorite sports you want to find out about. That was the worst sentence ever. And the events of the at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find the reviews, news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf, college football, everything you want. They got it right there, and you won't be ruined. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores and podcasts. They got you covered. Head over to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening right now. Bet Online is where the game starts. And there's the Bet Online symbol for those who are watching on the YouTube device. Um, <clears throat> so, Jimmy, let's go back to the. Uh, depth chart here for a minute. You know, on, on our previous podcast, we talked about the depth chart that came out while we were doing the podcast. And um, we got a couple of questions uh, oh, from, from other folks. And, and they were all the questions centered around the Brockemeyers. Like, where are the Brockemeyers? What's going on? And mm -hmm. I'm beginning to get the feel mm -hmm. that it's not going to click for them here. And I'm saying that as a guy who's not at practice every day, I'm saying that as a guy who um, doesn't know the Brockermeyers personally, doesn't talk to the offensive line coach, nor Nick Saban on a daily basis or any right. basis. I'm saying this from a I've, – I've done this long enough to kind of begin to figure out when somebody's not necessarily getting it. And everybody will raise their hand, what about Matt Jones? Matt Jones was a different, different, different story. We've needed offensive linemen. We've needed people to take over for some of the dudes that were starting for us. We didn't need Mac Jones to take over for Tua Tungavailoa. We didn't need him to, or Jalen Hurts. Didn't need him to. So um, I, I think that this is a different situation, and I'm beginning to get – I'm beginning to – I hate to say worry, because if they're not good enough to play for us, okay, we that's fine. That's no harm, no foul. I just wanted this to work for them so badly because I think it's a great story. Yeah, um, I agree that my feelings on what's going to happen with the, the Brock bros has uh, changed uh, myself. Uh, and I think those are good questions and they're understandable questions. First of all, you have to start with this. They've both been hurt. They've both had fairly significant injuries. Tommy to my knowledge, missed really the entirety of last fall, last summer and last fall, uh, while his fellow freshmen were working out, getting bigger and stronger and learning the offense, he was hurt. Uh, James uh, was hurt the entirety of this previous spring. Uh, so right when Tommy is sort of like getting back or, or basically showing up for the first time, you know, James is out. So first of all, they've been hurt. 
that's not an excuse. That's a reason that that things haven't been fantastic right from the jump. Okay, I mean that that's that's the reason. Number two, this is a highly developmental position. It's the offensive line. Fans have to be more patient about offensive linemen and quarterbacks more than any other position. It's developmental. Kids will get better as they get bigger and stronger and learn the offense and, and everything else. So I'm not giving up on them by any means. I, I, I am very curious to know how it's going to work out for both. I just already, in my mind, guys, I'm going to worry about those two next spring. They're not in the picture this fall. I didn't expect them to be in the picture this fall. I didn't expect them to be in the two deep this fall. If you expected that, maybe you don't listen to our show enough. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, I, I just had no expectations that the Brockermeyer brothers would be in the two deep. James is a third uh, center uh, right now. And by the way, Seth is, you know, I, I assume Seth is okay. I don't know. I mean, but but James is the third center. Tommy is a third tackle right now the second tackles are kite and george that's who he's got to beat out to be a, a number two and i i think based on the fact he was never really healthy until this year uh that's just unrealistic uh kite and george have been at it longer um so i think we'll really know what we have with them next spring that so i i, I pers my personal stance is let's see where they're at next spring now if the question is this jimmy today Today, do you advise me to uh, buy or sell Brockermeyer stock? I'm, I'm selling. So, yeah. if that, so, so if that satisfies people that, that want me to be negative, <laughs> I'll, I'll admit to that. Uh, but I, I'm not giving up on them by any means. I'm still excited to have both. But two more points. Number one, look, the numbers right now, you know, I talk about numbers to the point it drives people crazy. But the numbers right now are very easy. We're full, right? We're absolutely full, full 85 on scholarship. So for Alabama to add 31 guys, and it looks like we're going to sign about 28 and, and maybe sign two or three more guys out of the portal, that's 31. For Alabama to add 31, you got to subtract 31. How many guys do you think are going in the draft? <laughs> Not 31, you know? So the point is, sometimes fans see the attrition, the guys going into the portal and go, oh, no, what happened? We got to have kids go to the portal. You got to. You can't not lose people from the portal and then sign 31. So it's not bad news when kids go to the portal. We need it to happen. And ideally, it's coming from kids that aren't in the 2D, right? So nobody should be, like, negative. And one final point. I don't know what it is about football that's so different than the other sports, Luke, but something is different that fans treat the sport differently than other sports. But when a, a first round pick in the baseball draft, a first round pick, a guy that gets guaranteed money and millions of dollars out of high school or college, and he's drafting the first round and then never makes it above, <coughs> never makes it above double A baseball. I don't think fans scratch their head and go, what the heck happened? This is a disgrace. What happened? Why didn't he in the major leagues? We drafted him in the first round. Well, baseball's hard. Baseball's hard. I think people ex accept that. They know that half of first round picks aren't going to make it. But there's something about football and five stars that when they don't make it, it perplexes people. They can't wrap their head around the fact that a five star ends up he wasn't very great. And we've had it at Alabama repeatedly because it's a sports thing. It's not an Alabama thing. It's a sports thing. Some highly regarded, highly rated prospects ends up they weren't that great. Uh, that happens all the time. You know, I mean, I think you it, it, you can relate it to um, same thing with like a five star restaurant. There's a restaurant in Chicago, I think, called Charlie Trotters. I think it's called Charlie Trotters. It's supposed dude to be a Auburn five star. I'm sorry, dude at Auburn on that. And Charlie Trotter an Auburn thing. Yeah, I think it was. There was a Barrett Trotter. There may have been a Charlie Trotter. Anyway, it doesn't like matter. Said, uh, okay. This, the, <laughs> you're trying to throw me off my story. That's pretty um, off. So my parents and some friends went to this place two decades ago. And 
they said, you know, there's five stars and everybody comes out with the gloves and the, you know, they have that little cover, that little silver cover over your dish and they bring it to you and it's voila and all this stuff. And um, they, they bring it to him and everything was, now this is the essence of, and this is the, you know, all this other, you know, the, the juice of, and the blank of, you know, everything had a preposition in it. And dad said, it kind of sucked. You know, he just said, it just kind of sucked. He said, the food wasn't good. Every, every, they kept telling me how good this was. And I kept eating it and going, this just isn't very good. And so they all went somewhere else, you know, cause they were all still hungry. Cause you know, they give you like two baby carrots and a lamb's hoof. And uh, that's all you get for dinner, right? Yeah, and so they go to places like that. I, I'm 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 all for nice restaurants. I like them. I'm sort of a fan of of a nice night out at a restaurant, even with the big bill. I'm a fan. But a, it's got to be good, and b, give me enough food so I don't leave hungry. Right. I mean, well, we ate a breakfast best. in Indianapolis, a very nice brunch breakfast place, and and it was not cheap. And I left that. I'm like. I have to go to like a McDonald's or something. I'm, I'm starving because they just don't give you any food. They just present it. And I'm, and it was good. It was good. The three bites were good, but I mean, just three bites for 60 bucks is just, what the heck are we doing here? Well, my point is that once a five-star restaurant disappoints you, no matter how many times the meal is good after that, it's hard for them to, um, get that five star status back in your mind. Like you're always right. going to go back to, man. I just remember being so disappointed with this meal is awesome, but the last time I came here or the tenth time I came here was terrible, and almost vice versa for a little dive in the wall, right. a, a little three star pizza place that was lightly right. recruited, you know, right. out of uh, Clark County right. and out of, Bulls, uh, out of the Bulls School in Jacksonville as a quarterback, and you uh, and you go there and like. The, the forks are dirty. The napkins have stains on them. There's uh, that was Mac. That was urine Mac. on the floor. On <laughs> Maybe that's not a three star. I don't know. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we got a few odd and end things. And we're back. Uh, first of all, Jimmy, congratulations are in order to Will Anderson, Jordan Battle, Henry Toa Toa, and Brian Branch for all securing NIL deals with. Crystal Burgers. Boy, I bet Amy Bragg was like, congratulations, do not eat it. Don't <laughs> eat it. I, I would think that would be Amy Bragg's advice, but I, I don't know. It's, it's uh, hey, I, I like it when our kids cash in. So it's, it's win-win for everybody. I'm looking forward to, is that a NIL store going to be open on game day Saturday? Do we know? The Fanatics? Ooh, I don't know. Okay. Gosh, I hope so. In. I'm going to be in there with some uh, some credit. I'm going to the beach. I'm going in there to buy. I want to I'm going buy. to the beach for this game, and then I'm going to the Texas game, and I think you are too. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm not. My first home game is going to be the 17th, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. But um, yeah, you know what I, I, want I, that I would pay like 10 bucks for. I'd pay 10. No, no, no. I'd pay 20 bucks for this. I, I hope the nil. What I want is like a hugger that goes on my beer, like a hugger, and, and it's got like the cool Alabama logo on it literally signed by by one of the players like like a like a jameer gibbs signed it's like signed by jameer and it's just a hugger and and i'll pay 20 bucks for that signed by the brockemeyers you'd take it i'm uh, done done 20 bucks i'm in from you they're twins you take both of you take two of them <laughs> if um, one of them's gonna sign it the other one should he's probably around uh so, and, and by the way, they will be selling beer and wine at the game. For those who don't know, uh, AL.com had a great article about what to expect when you go to Bryant Denny this weekend and selling beer and wine is one of the things. And so, <clears throat> hey, um, kudos to Bryant Denny because they're about to make some cash. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and good, good for Alabama. I'm anxious to see how we handle it in terms of uh, – I hope it's not just a drunken mess and everybody act like a jerk. I mean, I hope not. So you hope it's not like every other home game? I mean. <laughs> That's right. Maybe this will settle us down. Maybe this will calm everything down. Uh, That's literally every game I've ever been to. I'm definitely going to get – I mean, I'm a beer drinker, as everybody knows that listens to this show. Uh, you know, 
for the novelty of it, I'm definitely going to buy a beer Saturday. I mean, for the, I want to say I bought a beer the first time they ever sold it, but I'm not myself. Hey, I mean, I'll, I'll drink beer most of the day. I, 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 you know, I'm not fired up about spending, you know, 14 bucks on a, on a beer, but I will for the novelty of it, but I'm not going to sit there and spend a hundred bucks pounding beers. I, uh, I'll, I'll have a few, you know, throughout the day. Finally, Jimmy, this was kind of a cool thing and you and I are going to do this probably in the off season. I mean, there's too much going on now with this season upon us, but um, we did this. I think this, we did this. We're talking Tuscaloosa. We drafted our all Saban teams. And right. at the time, if you remember, you had the first pick and you took Tua Tungavailoa and everything was kind of downhill from there. I mean, I had a superstar team, but you had the quarterback. I mean, I had to go with A.J. McCarron. I mean, it's, and I love A.J. McCarron, but he's not in the league of these last few quarterbacks we have. Now it's going to be a little bit more even um, with whoever gets the first pick. But ESPN, their college uh, crew, did a – a draft drafting college football's best players into four super teams position by position. The first pick as a train is going to roll right by while I'm doing this is yeah. Will Anderson. No shot. I think he'll be the first pick in the literal draft. So, I mean, that makes a ton of sense, right? Right. The second pick CJ Stroud and Bryce Young was the third pick. And, you know, I'm just, this, this sound, there's nothing worse than a bammer who thinks the world is out to get bammers. But is Bryce Young being a little tiny bit disrespected in the sense that the, the Heisman odds seem to favor CJ Stroud over him? Um, last night I, I saw the Herbie Awards, which is the biggest pile of nothing there ever was, but it had me completely soaked in. I mean, I was all in on it. Um, and he had C.J. Stroud as his MVP or whatever it is, Herbie VP or whatever the heck it is. Um, th these guys, they draft C.J. Stroud before Bryce Young. And I'm just going, guys, I mean, did y'all not see this cat work miracles behind an offensive line that was not very good, at least by Alabama standards, that was missing weapons left and right? had other weapons while they were on the team, their mind was somewhere else. I mean, I, I I don't understand how people can look at Bryce Young and go, yeah, I think there are a few quarterbacks better than him. <laughs> I don't think picking Stroud means there's a few better than him, but I'll say I agree with you. If anybody out there feels like Bryce isn't getting the respect he deserves, I don't disagree with that notion. That, that might be true. He probably should be the Heisman favorite. Uh, he is a year older. He was a sophomore. Now he's a junior. Uh, the offensive line's probably a little better. He's got Gibbs and, you know, and, and but I, I think a couple things. He's not the Heisman favorite because nobody's won it back to back since the 70s. And number two, I think they look at, well, Bama lost JMO and Mechie and they don't have obvious replacements. Uh, I'll say this. Uh, I, I, as a player, I'm a fan of CJ Stroud. I mean, I, I think he's great. Uh, I, 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 I can see why the NFL loves him. I can see why he's likely to be a Heisman candidate and, and a very good NFL quarterback prospect. He's also 6'3". That's going to help him, uh, you know, in comparisons with Bryce when it comes to the draft. Uh, so I, I think C.J. Stroud's really good. I do, uh, just like Bryce. So I don't think it's disrespectful of C.J. versus Bryce and some – some siding with CJ. I, I can get it. I mean, I don't, I'm not trading him for Stroud. That's the thing. I'm not trading him for Stroud. I'm going to take Bryce. He's my guy. But anybody that has a football opinion that says, eh, I think CJ is a better player. I disagree, but I get it. I, and again, I kind of get it. Same thing about Tyler Van Dyke or Will Levis, who are yeah. also projected first round picks. Then okay. I'd be, my panties would be in a wad over that. Nobody wants to see Jimmy's wadded panties. I think we all know this. <laughs> no, um, no. Now, but here's my thing, Jimmy. Okay, you want to say C.J. Stroud's a little taller. <clears throat> That's fine. I'm going to say Bryce Young won his conference and took his team to the national championship game. I'm going to say Bryce Young has played right. tougher competition. I'm going to say that um, while Alabama had some good receivers for most of the year, intact in terms of John Mitchie and Jamison Williams. 
I would still give the nod to better receiving core to Ohio State. Marvin okay. Harrison Jr., Jackson That's a great Smith. Point. He's still um, got Smith and Jigba, who is admittedly better than anybody in Alabama's got. That's going to help put up numbers. You know, uh, he does have a good cast. Henderson. I mean, we got Gibbs. They got Henderson at running back. Who's a, but no, I'm talking about from last year. So yeah, even yeah, last oh, year. Yeah, yeah, well, they had Henderson and, and, and Smith and Jigba last year, but along with Alavi, along with Garrett Wilson, along with the tight end, who, who yeah. was a, a pretty hot draft pick. But so my point is, you know, I know, I feel 100% certain if Bryce Young went to Ohio State and we're playing for them, that he'd be putting up insane numbers, equal to or better than what he had for us last year. Because, number one, the competition's not as good. And, number two, he has a better receiving core. But am I certain that if C.J. Stroud came here, he would be putting up the same numbers as Bryce Young did last year? And my answer is, I don't know. I mean, he, <clears throat> maybe, but I'm I'm not super confident. Um, and I know this, I know this, when we, when the chips were down on the table, Bryce Young was missing his best receiver. We were 97 right. yards from losing to Auburn. We needed right. him. He made it happen. I know this, Bryce Young's the only quarterback last year to beat Georgia and one of the most historic defenses in college football history. So <clears throat> again, hey, it's just, let's get used to it. It's going to be Young versus Stroud all season long. We're going to hear it all season long yeah. and we might see it in the national championship game. And then we'll hear about them being dissected, for, uh, you know, side by side uh, for three months uh, in the lead up to the draft. All right, buddy, that's going to do it for today's podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more Locked on Bama. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight. Hey, and I didn't wreck the car while I did the podcast. <laughs>